Good afternoon. So my first slide has already been covered by Jean Arnold. So why this package? So it has been very clear, by, also by Jean-Michel, that we need much more investment. And when the European Commission evaluated the uh, infrastructure policy that was already in place uh, for several years, they concluded that of the 200 billion that needs to be invested, half or more than half was at risk of not being delivered or much too late. So hence uh, this new package. And why CBA in the package? It has already been touched upon by the previous speakers, but let me quickly repeat. So there is first this idea of having European priority projects that will then be pushed at European level. They are called projects of common interest. And this cost-benefit analysis will help identify uh, these projects. And also in the package, there is this idea of improving cost allocation. So if national regulators do not agree on how to allocate the costs on the projects between the two, there can be an intervention of ACER that will use the results of the cost-benefit analysis to allocate the costs, so to decide on the cost allocation. Um, and the last element is that this uh, method could also be used to identify projects that have more risk than an average project. And for these projects, then, the package foresees that additional <coughs> investment incentives should be in place. Okay, then uh, last question is why a THINK report? So a THINK is a European uh, research-funded project, and we work for European Commission on a semester basis. So on a semester basis, they tell us which are the topics they would like us to work on. And in this case, we worked on the cost-benefit analysis method. Uh, why? Because um, first, there will be a single method that will be developed. Once the package is in place, there is a process of ENSOE proposing a method, ACER member states giving advice on the method, and eventually this will lead to the adoption of this single method. So we have been working proactively with regulators, with European Commission and with ENSOE since uh, April last year on thinking about this method and how uh, it could be made. Uh, meanwhile, ENSOE already proposed a draft method, so they are proactively working on this topic, which, which has allowed us not to come with our own method, but to simply suggest improvements to the method uh, proposed by ENSOE. And that, well, uh, in conclusion of all this work, has been that the proposal by NSOE is really already a big step forward. Um, but of course, we still have uh, here and there some improvements to suggest. And I will uh, illustrate a few of them in my presentation. Uh, first, to give you an idea of what we did in the report, here is the outline. So we have three chapters. First, we discuss uh, what is the scope of the analysis. So what do we really, what are we analyzing? then how to calculate once we know what we want to analyze. And then finally is once we have that number, that not net benefit of a project, how will we then rank these projects uh, based on that number? Um, this includes dealing with many issues. So, I mean, uh, cost-benefit analysis is an economic instrument that has been used in many uh, domains. It's not new. So there is a well-established theory and practice. And all we did is to go through all this experience we have with cost-benefit analysis and then to, 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 know, to, to, to suggest, based on that experience, uh, what we could do uh, to deal with these issues. So if you would uh, summarize what we did, you could say that we did a sort of ABC of the CBA. <laughs> so that fits also my young profile, as Jean-Michel said. <laughs> That's why I'm presenting this part. So I, I cannot present all of it today. In fact, just before coming here, last Friday, we published the report, so you can look at it later. I just want to uh, guide you through one, uh, few, a few issues, like, and one is the effect mapping. Um, so what ENSOE has proposed at the end of last year is that um, there is lots of effects to be taken into account, uh, you know, socio-economic welfare, effect of uh, infrastructure project on losses, effect on renewable integration, I mean, all the usual effects we know. And they distinguish between effects that will be monetized and effects that will be quantified as individual indicators, arguing that some effects are more difficult to monetize, so better not. Uh, that's the ENSOE proposal. What we comment in our report is that eventually you will have to rank these projects anyway. And if you rank, so you determine what is the relative uh, net value of a project, you are implicitly monetizing the effects you have not uh, explicitly monetized previously. So better to monetize all of them explicitly, which is more transparent and uh, allows for more discussion. So that, 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 that is why we have these two uh, recommendations in our report. One is that uh, CBA should concentrate on a reduced list of effects and those should be monetized. 
Um, and then when we do the ranking, we sh that ranking should be primarily based on these monetized uh, net benefits. That's for the scope of the analysis. Then, um, well, so then what is this uh, reduced uh, list of effects that we uh, suggest to concentrate on? Well, first here is a map of all the effects. I mean, if you think of an infrastructure project, you add it to a power system. The first effects are, of course, in the power system. You change demand and you change production. Then around that, you have externalities. I mean, it can change emissions. It can change uh, renewable integration. And the last part on the outer circle is macroeconomic effects, jobs, economic growth. Then we thought, OK, how would you um, categorize inside these three layers? And then we came up with this. So in power system effects, you have production, consumption, and the cost of the infrastructure. And you can have other uh, benefits, which can be related to market integration, market liquidity, and uh, market power. Then externalities is CO2, local environmental social costs, renewable energy, and early deployment. So this is in relation to innovation, using new technologies. Then we, we, for each of these effects, we thought, OK, which are really the ones we should concentrate on? And I, I, will, I will not go through all the details, but the conclusion has been that we think that these three are key. So we would like that all projects would at least uh, be evaluated according to these three effects. Uh, why not CO2 and renewables as a separate effect? In fact, we have already a lot of EU policy and regulation in place, which internalizes these benefits inside production costs. I mean, CO2, we have a carbon price. So thanks to the carbon price, whatever we do to CO2 emissions is already integrated in these uh, production uh, cost savings. OK, so these are then the, the, the three that all should be evaluated for all projects. Of course, uh, many of these other effects for specific projects uh, might be very relevant. So for some projects, we will need to evaluate also some of these other elements. Take, for instance, early deployment. If there is an offshore project where it's all about deploying a first of a kind uh, project, then you could argue that on top of these three effects, we would also need to look at uh, that effect. OK, so then uh, once we know what we want to analyze, how to, what model to use is the first element I, I will discuss. So here, NCOE uh, proposes that these regional groups that Jean Arnold introduced, that they can decide on the actual model to do the calculation. While at European level, the method would only specify some things that all these models should include. Um, then we made a comment saying that this is fine because indeed uh, there is no perfect model. So you, you, it's okay to have different models being used for different projects. But there, should be a, a, there is a very important role to make sure that whatever model will be chosen, if it contains a lot of detailed data about power plants, this power plant data should be part of the data validation process, which is a separate process, but it should be coordinated with the choice of the model. Um, that's very important. We also emphasized that the value of lost load is very important to take into account uh, and to really monetize, which is something that in the current proposal or NSOE does not envisage to, to monetize. Um, so that then leads to these recommendations. Um, again, we say that um, the model used to monetize these three effects that are relevant for all projects should be explicitly stated, because of course the model is not perfect, but we need to know all the assumptions of the model to be able to interpret the results. So that's very important. Um, and then the last part is that it is true that we do not yet have a value of lost load reference in most countries, but there is CER uh, guidelines on how to establish such a value and if we cannot do it immediately, an intermediate step could be that as part of this data validation process we have to do anyway, we also agree on a value of lost load to be used in the analysis. The last part is uncertainty. Uh, there is a lot of uncertainty regarding these investments. So how to deal with uncertainty in this method is, is another key issue. Um, here, NSOE has proposed to use multi-scenarios and to use also sensitivity analysis while not yet considering a full stochastic approach. Um, and we commented to say that uh, the stochastic approach actually has, at a national level, already been implemented by several TSOs, including AirGrid in the east-west cost-benefit analysis. So it would be good to adopt this approach at the EU level. Um, why? Because first, if we have this stochastic approach, we could have an approach that is consistent with the 2050 roadmap. 
uh, Helen uh, worked on that roadmap. And in the roadmap, we already have scenarios up to 2050, uh, energy efficiency scenario, a renewable scenario, or a more uh, diversified scenario. And actually, th this gives a good picture of possible futures. So we could use those scenarios and, and, and then apply a stochastic approach so that we do not get a net benefit in many scenarios, but we get one uh, net benefit distribution across these scenarios. And then if we rank projects, we could simply rank this project based on the mean value, the average value of, of, of that distribution. And we would see also the risk of projects, because some projects will have a larger distribution than others, which would allow us to make adjustment for risk if we would identify extremely risky projects. OK, so then um, I, just to give you an idea, in total we actually have 10 recommendations. And as you can see, I only presented a few of them. Uh, but no, not to worry, as I said, we are, the, the report is out. It's 40 pages, so maybe it's too much for you to read, and this is why we also have a policy brief. That's only five pages, so more uh, easy to read. In the video. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>